this off. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me do a sound check. Can folks in the back hear me okay? Thumbs up? Outstanding. Well, welcome, everybody, uh, to MITRE this afternoon. My name is Doug Robbins, Vice President of Engineering and Prototyping in MITRE Labs. And on behalf of the 2,300 industrious and smart and mission-oriented folks we have here on this Bedford campus, I wanted to welcome everybody, uh, certainly this esteemed group uh, here. I want to recognize a few folks before we get into the program. Certainly um, all of the MITRE staff, thank you. Uh, Senior Vice Presidents, uh, Dr. Jay Schnitzer, Kathleen Federico, and Lori John Domenico, thank you for being here. Certainly uh, Governor Healy, uh, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, and Secretary of Economic Development, Hal, thank you. Um, uh, Congressman Auchincloss, uh, thank you for taking advantage of the fortuitous events, or not so, I don't know, <laughs> and joining us today. Um, Representative Ken Gordon uh, is here, and uh, the new interim town Bedford manager, uh, Colleen Doyle. Uh, let's see, our friends from MassTech, Carolyn Kirk, and there we go, and Pat Larkin, thank you for, for joining us. Uh, our partners at U.S. Coast Guard Sector Boston and Commander Joel Kurse. Uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for all that you do for us. And last but not least, all of the uh, the press and the business associations that are here. Um, so, so in just about a month, MITRE is celebrating our 65th anniversary. We started, I think, this this place where where we started was a pig farm then, and and the the first building was just over there, uh, and and we were founded uh, with an understanding that there are nationally hard problems that really take a collective effort to get after where you bring together industry, government, and academia. And that's what MITRE does. We're an independent, not-for-profit national organization that operates research and development centers to help the U.S. federal government solve hard problems. Uh, so you fast forward to today. Uh, we have the privilege of operating six FFRDCs, six of these research centers, in, in everything from national security to homeland security uh, to health care for Commerce, Treasury, NIST, uh, uh, to include NOAA. And if you really look at the missions that they have and you're digging into what they are, many of them intersect our coastal waters and the oceans. And it's really driving a need to have, uh, to get after some complex science, research, and engineering that let us understand what's going on in our coastal waters, uh, kind of make them transparent so that we can make effective solutions and policies. And Blue Tech uh, underpins that. And, uh, and, and that's what this project I think we're here to talk about is all about. How do we uh, collectively uh, build the network and capabilities so, uh, you know, industry, academia, and, and the government can work together to understand what's going on our, in our oceans and, oh, by the way, create, kind of lower the barrier for the startup uh, community so that they can be building the capabilities that fuel uh, our economy in the region. And we're just absolutely honored to have the uh, governor and the administration here who I think share that mission of making Massachusetts and the region kind of the preeminent destination for blue tech and, and climate innovation. Uh, so with that, um, the governor certainly hasn't uh, wasted any time, hit the ground running in the first six months, creating opportunities in the Commonwealth for ideas, jobs, and companies, and has been uh, an advocate and pushing for the research and development uh, needed uh, and manufacturing needed for many places, but certainly for Blue Tech. So with that, uh, I would like to invite Governor up for a few remarks. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Doug, uh, for the introduction. and. Most importantly, for the, the invitation for our team to be here with all of you this afternoon to celebrate the incredible work that MITRE has always done and to also think about and lean into some of the partnerships that we sure would love to have as a state with the likes of all of you. It's uh, an honor to be joined by our Congressman Jay Gockenklaas, who has been a champion for uh, research, science, investment in our bioeconomy, as well as just our, our fight for uh, a competitive advantage here in our state. So it's wonderful to see you, Congressman. Um, and to all of the, the electeds who are here today, I see Representative Gordon, thank you. And um, also we have with us, uh, I know our, our town administrator, so, so important from the town of Bedford, 
um, and our team, as was mentioned, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, who knows a thing or two about the ocean and the importance of a marine economy, um, as well as our Secretary of Economic Development, of course, Yvonne Howe, who, together with our Undersecretary of Economic Development, Sarah Stanton, have really been out and about looking to champion and also find ways for public-private partnership. And so we're really excited about that. We also have with us, of course, uh, Carolyn Kirk and the team at Mass Tech, uh, excited for the work that they do and are going to do. And a person new to our team, Quentin Palfrey, who is our Director of Federal Funds and Infrastructure, uh, really trying to knit together and make sure that we are taking advantage of uh, the great work and funding and appropriation that is out there, thanks to the work of, of Jake and his colleagues, um, in a way that will maximize the, the impact in, in Massachusetts. So today, I am told, is World Ocean Day. So it's very befitting that we're here uh, with all of you. I know we're not exactly on the ocean right now, but today's announcement does show the innovation that's possible in the blue tech space, no matter where you are in the Commonwealth. Uh, Massachusetts, of course, our calling card, we were built around ocean-focused industries, technologies that have evolved through time. Uh, this includes, of course, commercial fishing, trade and transportation, energy production, to name a few. Today, we proudly are the leader in marine-focused technologies and the development of an offshore clean energy economy. That leadership extends to areas like marine robotics and other high-tech sectors where we have everything from new startups to global leaders. We've also made a major commitment to leading the world in clean energy because we see climate change not only as a threat but also is a real economic opportunity for our state and for our region. So I guess to, to sum up our, our view of today's announcement, it's significant and important for so many reasons, uh, one of which is that we know it's going to help unlock more of the innovation uh, that will help us as a state through partnership take advantage of, of that technology and innovation. Um, and it's super, super exciting. We're also happy to be here today to announce um, a grant of over $2 million to MITRE to create the Blue Tech Ocean. Uh, that stands for the Blue Tech Open Collaborative Experimentation and Acceleration Network. And it means not just one thing, but many incredible innovations uh, to come through this partnership. This grant comes through the work of the Innovation Institute at Mass Tech Collaborative. Thank you to Carolyn and the team uh, for being here today and for your work in getting this done. It's part of Mass Tech's program to strengthen our tech ecosystem in regions across the state. And in particular, this grant, of course, is going to help accelerate the blue tech innovation right here in Bedford in Massachusetts. Uh, Blue Tech, we know, contributes to the advancement of at least seven industries important to our own state. Ports and shipping, defense, marine trades, ocean-based renewables, aquaculture, fisheries, and tourism and recreation. Blue Tech is clearly a space where we have an opportunity to grow. And MITRE is a great, great place to invest in as the leading operator of federally funded research and development centers in this country. And that is something for which you should be very, very proud. Now, our grant will support a two-year-long project, about a $4.3 million total project. This project is focused on expanding access to marine data and connectivity among research institutions across the country. We know how important it is in this time. To, to leverage all of that. It will also help MITRE build out their Blue Tech Lab, the Blue Tech Lab, which we're excited to see right here on the Bedford campus. You've come a long way from pig farming, uh, where multiple companies and researchers can develop new technologies. And it includes, importantly, uh, particularly for us here in this administration, exciting opportunities for workforce development. Uh, a chance for us to uh, lengthen our lead as, as a global hub for marine research. And we are doing it um, uh, in, in many different ways and really through so much of the great work that is happening right here on this campus. So it's about leadership. It's about everyone working together. It's wonderful to see our friends from the Coast Guard. We thank you not only for your service, but also for the ways in which you contribute uh, to, to research, to data, 
uh, to the kinds of you know things that make possible the inventions and innovations and all the super cool stuff that you know we don't need to know about or know how it works. We just need to know it's out there, and it's it's powering incredibly important things that contribute to the safety and well-being of uh, of folks across this country and across this world. Um, new technologies developed by MITRE and their partners are going to help us combat climate change, preserve our marine resources, grow jobs, great paying jobs, and advance all of our maritime industries. So I want to once again thank MITRE for hosting us. Thank you to all of the ocean partners who are uh, represented in this room. Uh, we look forward to touring this facility today and to learning more about the important work that goes on here. And I'll just say that, you know, I was talking to Doug on the way in about how it is that you're able to recruit to MITRE. This is, and uh, we talked about the mission-driven nature of the work that you do. And that is something hard to put a price on. Everyone's going to pay their bills, we understand. But I also know that there are a lot of places that would benefit from your talents and your, and your energies and your smarts. And I just want to say, as governor, I am very, very grateful uh, to all of you who choose to show up here every day on campus to do work that is meaningful, that is transformational. And I also really appreciate uh, your willingness to dive in to tackling hard problems. That's why you guys are here. Um, there are a lot of people out there creating all sorts of fun apps that distract and, you know, amuse and all sorts of things, right? Um, but the work you do, the work you do, it goes right to our nation's defense, to our security, to our well-being, and as goes America, so goes the world. So I want to thank you to each of you here at MITRE for choosing to show up. I look forward to the work that you're going to do in partnership. Uh, with our ocean partners and beyond, and certainly we are looking for ways to have that um, as something that really powers us forward as a state um, in, in the time ahead. So thanks very much. And now I want to invite up to the podium uh, your Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll, who, as you know, was formerly the mayor of the great city of Salem. She is an uh, incredible, incredible, an incredibly hard worker, an incredible visionary, a terrific team player, uh, and brings an urgency of action and focus to, to everything that we do. So let's welcome Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Governor. It is great to be in a room full of difference makers. We were heading up to this campus trying to describe what happens here. Um, it's not easy to put it in one sentence, especially when you're not here. Uh, and I think um, as we were walking on the tour, we we're like, you're the SWAT team. You're the people that people call when they need something settled or solved or they've got a hard problem. And so I think we're just so thrilled to be here to have such a strong partnership in Massachusetts. I think it's the thing that makes our administration so proud to be able to do this work is that we don't settle in Massachusetts. We're like willing to fail up and find other ways to move the needle in efforts to make our communities better. And most of what you're doing may not always feel like you're helping communities, but you are. And this grant in particular just wanted to share a little bit more information as to why we see this as a real win-win. Um, and as the governor mentioned, as the mayor of Salem, the blue economy for me is very real, very powerful force of revitalizing communities. You know, the first millionaire in America hailed from Salem, tied to the great age of sail and the wonderful bounty that the ocean has always provided, the prominence that it brought to not only our, our city in Salem, but frankly, the entire Commonwealth. And we're one of those coastal communities whose maritime economy, you know, led to a, a bright future. And it took that focus and sustained collaboration between government, the private sector, and the innovation economy to revive the potential of waterfront in the 21st century. I'm fond of um, telling a story in Salem that, you know, the great age of sail was led by a lot of people, but we had 16-year-old sea captains sailing tiny, tiny clipper ships around the world to Sumatra and the Far East, and they'd bring back wares. Like, I have a 19-year-old who I can't get to pick up a ta wet towel off the floor, and yet, this was happening, it was real, and I think it's the sort of innovation economy that we ask everyone to you know, give us their best so that we can be better. And I think what we're celebrating here today is just another great Massachusetts partnership which impacts 
the local, regional, statewide, and ultimately, you know, global economy in many ways. This new facility will complement the existing suite of R&D centers that exist in the state, adding another jewel um, to this sector. We had Mass Bio here this week talking about the life sciences sector. We were so excited about the opportunity to use those same sort of skill sets and tools, but to grow a stronger blue economy tied to the work that you're going to be doing. You know, MITRE is advancing this project with the partnership of some others that I think also bear mention, uh, other leading blue tech organizations in this state, including three universities, UMass Boston, UMass Dartmouth, who's been a key contributor to the Seaport Economic Council and the work we're doing there, and Northeastern University. There are two nonprofits, Mass Challenge and the Woods Hole Ocean Office, Ocean Office Oce it's just easier to say hooey, isn't it? Ocean <laughs> Oceanographic Institute, where we visited earlier and also, you know, had an opportunity to see folks doing such good work every single day. And then private sector companies from across the state, including MSI Transducers, Boston Engineering, and Applied Physical Sciences. Um, a leading public data center in the Mass Green High Performance Computing Center, another way to, to make sure we're, we're handling the work that we need to. And obviously also working with a high school, like what a great combination to have Notre Dame, Cristo Ray, and Lawrence also part of this effort. And, you know, part of these grant dollars will help us focus on the workforce needs and accelerating the workforce needs to support the growing blue tech companies. Like we're seeing that everywhere. Um, I'd say after housing, something that we're also focused on, Workforce is the number one issue we hear across the Commonwealth in terms of uh, needs, particularly in areas where we know we have a strength and we want to continue to grow it. So the ability for this grant to help do things like purchase remotely operated vehicle kits for both college and high school students to get experience designing and building ocean-going crafts fits perfectly in our message of redesigning high school, finding a way to make sure high school, when you're there, it connects to what you might want to do in your career. This grant and this program are going to bring new, to new tools and allow us to grow this blue economy, also offering access to like a cutting-edge facility not just for yourselves, but for others who may need that hands-on research and training and broadening those who are able to take advantage of that effort, bringing in more diverse students across the state who are interested in these newer economies and newer innovations, particularly tied to our ocean. Um, that's going to help all of our communities um, to deepen our talent pools, to benefit from really your global leadership in this space. And think about the students that you're going to be able to influence who will be able to not only understand a technology that's new, be exposed to it earlier, but to be able to help us lead the state forward. Who's going to be sitting in all of these seats a decade from now, two decades from now? Maybe some of us still will be, but I hope it's going to be a whole range of folks whose interests were sparked, whose opportunities to help themselves and to help our Commonwealth started with you. So we're excited to be here, to be able to tour some of the facilities, and we come with a great deal of gratitude for the partnership that you're leading, the innovation you're driving, and the opportunities you're creating. Thank you. As I mentioned earlier, we're really uh, excited, though, sorry about the circumstances, Congressman, uh, but we're really excited to have with us Congressman Auchincloss, who, you know, from the time he got elected has just uh, been getting after it in really, really terrific ways. And, you know, if there's a person on our speed dial who we want to reach when it comes to all things research, uh, economic, um, you know, all the science, um, it's, it's really Jake Auchincloss. So we're delighted that he can be with us as, as part of today's announcement. I appreciate the, the gracious words from the governor and, and the warm welcome from MITRE. Uh, I do not have the privilege and the pleasure of representing Bedford in the U.S. Congress, but I represent Massachusetts and southeastern Massachusetts and all of the Commonwealth's past and future is inextricably tied to the ocean. It's a, it's a means of trade and transportation. It's a venue for tourism and hospitality. It's a laboratory for science and technology and research. And in, in the future, it is going to be a source of clean, affordable, reliable energy uh, as we unlock offshore wind and turn it, to, and turn it into a powerhouse industry with which Massachusetts can lead the way. MITRE is helping us build out the platform to connect all these disparate use cases and, and to make them all more productive. And 
you know, I'll be candid. I don't think I really understand all the technology that you do, <laughs> that you're using to do that with um, in, my, in my simple politician's brain. But what I do understand is that you are connecting smart people with each other. And that's really what it comes down to. The differentiator for Massachusetts is the talent and the work ethic of our people. It is what makes us different and unique as a commonwealth. It is what is going to drive our economy going forward. And what MITRE is building here, which you are quarterbacking and, speed, and spearheading, is going to be a way to make the whole greater than the sum of the parts. That as we bring the best and the brightest from the world over, we can allow them to accomplish things that even they, in their brilliance, could not have accomplished individually. And that is what is so exciting to me. What is also heartening for me to see is the ferocity with which Massachusetts is, uh, is pursuing this kind of research and development under the leadership of, of Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. Uh, in my first term in Congress, we passed a lot of really good legislation to fund research and development and infrastructure and workforce. It was historic legislation, more productive term of Congress than any since the 1960s by a lot of measures. Uh, but then a week ago, we, we passed a compromise uh, with, the, with the Speaker of the House, Republican. Uh, and, but it's basically what it says is these investments, we're pushing pause on them. The, the, the money that we spent has been spent, and for the next couple of years, it's going to be a different fiscal environment. We can debate in a different format the, the decisions that were made, but the core is that we are now competing with 49 other states for the money that was allocated. And there is nobody with whom I would rather join in Team Massachusetts than Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Howe, to compete for that money because they are organized, they are disciplined, they want every last dollar of it. <laughs> and uh, with their leadership uh, and with the partnership that I am committing, and I know I can speak for Representatives Trahan and Moulton and, and, and the others who joined this letter of support for MITRE, um, I think Massachusetts is going to do very well. The governor said, you know, as goes Massachusetts, so goes the rest of the world. Well, I would add to that, uh, and I do, to my fellow members of Congress and to the various agencies in Washington, well, as goes Massachusetts, so goes America. We're going to build the future right here. Uh, and MITRE, I know, and the, and the Mass Tech Collaborative and the High Tech Council is going to support it. On that note, I want to turn it over to uh, Carolyn Kirk, the Executive Director of uh, of uh, the Mass Tech Council. Thank you, Congressman. It is a pleasure to see you t today and have you here. Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, we're grateful that you could join us today at MITRE for this exciting two plus million dollar announcement that came out of the Mass Tech Innovation Institute and our Tech and Innovation Fund. Um, Lieutenant Governor, you and I have been talking about blue economy for over 15 years. And remember we used to say the blue economy and people would say the what? It, and how far we have come in terms of the technology and the vision around what we can access and learn from our oceans and the technology to support that. Secretary Von Howe, thank you for your leadership and engagement, Chairman, Chairwoman of our board. Uh, very grateful for you hitting the ground running. I know this project is exciting. It will improve workforce. It will build our startup community, two things that I know are near and dear to your heart. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Mass Tech is a public economic development agency focused on tech, growing the tech and innovation sectors where uh, we think Massachusetts can be a global leader. Blue Tech is one of those areas. MITRE is an incredibly strong partner with Mass Tech, and I just want to take a moment. Dr. G uh, G Domenico, Chrissy Nolan gave me, a, gave me a lesson on how to say your name, so I'm going to say it again. Dr. Gian Domenico, thank you for the support you and your team has lent us on the chips and science microelectronics, uh, microelectronics pursuit. The team from MITRE has been by our side. They bring a level of expertise that is 
unmatched. And, and it's because of that, Congressman, um, that we will be able to, through all the partners that we engage with, leverage the power up that we have in Massachusetts to succeed and win. And Quinton, thank you for your support on those federal pursuits. But today we're here to talk about Blue Tech. Doug, it was a little over a year ago that we sat in a room and, and you spelled out the vision for this project. And um, my team, under the leadership of Pat Larkin, kind of went away and challenged you guys and said, you have to have partners, you have to have industry engagement, you have to have a workforce aspect of it. You guys had all the makings, but to have it come and gel together, and I understand you had a great partnership meeting today earlier. So thank you for um, your partnership, and we are so pleased and excited about what this initiative will yield. Um, as a former mayor also of a coastal city, we know um, that we have to get better at the way we analyze and collect data, whether it's for climate change or fisheries. You know, just those are two examples. This is planet ocean. And we can leverage our assets in the blue economy to propel economic growth all across the Commonwealth. Um, again, my thanks to Pat Larkin and his team. And our team brings a mix of economic development, a little bit of business, some technical. But really, when these projects are identified, we bring them through a review process where we bring in experts from the field. So these are third-party validated projects to be able to lean in and put the kind of um, dollars and the leadership behind these kinds of programs because we are then confident that we're going to get the results that we would like to achieve. One other team member I want to recognize is Megan Ab Abella Bowen and she is here from Mass Tech but she is um, she runs the MATE ROV uh, competition, which is a marine robotics competition that is run nationally and internationally. So Megan, thank you for your, your work on that and representing our state and Mass Tech so beautifully on that. Um, we're here to roll out the ocean project and cut a ribbon on the, the lab. And so lots of exciting things. But in closing, I just want to say thank you to Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Howe, Under Se Secretary Stanton for being here. And now the real blue tech expert is coming up to speak, Nick Rodker. He did his graduate studies at Tufts, interned here at MITRE, left to work at a startup, but then made his way back to MITRE, where he is the chief blue tech strategist. Please welcome up Nick Rucker. Thank you, Carolyn, and thank you all for coming. This is a very exciting day. Um, it's World Ocean Day, as the governor mentioned, and uh, as many of you probably know, the oceans cover about 71% of our planet, right? And they impact everything from our national security, our economic security, and our climate security. And so as MITRE set out to build our, our blue tech strategy, we really wanted to focus on four main pillars to really turbocharge the blue economy, right? So we're, we're building our state-of-the-art blue tech lab, right, to add capacity to the region and the country to enable better acceleration of technology uh, and capabilities to the oceans. We're working very hard to connect the ecosystem, uh, and we're most importantly growing that blue tech workforce that we've talked about a lot today. And this grant and why we're so excited about it really helps us catalyze this vision as we've set out uh, to grow the blue economy and really accelerate the collaboration and connectivity across the region. And so for this grant, we've received broad support from our federal delegation and the state and our partners across the region, and we really could not do this without all of you. Um, we are very excited to kick off this grant as it will outfit our Blue Tech Lab with a state-of-the-art Qualysys underwater camera system. So this camera system will be one of the first installed across the country and enable 0.1 centimeter accuracy. So anything that is floating in this tank, you will be able to track and target and work on really accelerating uh, our, our autonomy capabilities across the region. And as many of you know, the Commonwealth has a lot of underwater vehicle companies, and so this is a test bed in a uh, area where we are able to really accelerate getting those capabilities out the door. Uh, 
Um, other things that this grant will provide are acoustic measurement and data acquisition systems, people who are studying the ocean environment, oceanography, uh, and capabilities to advance climate technology as well as other underwater platforms. Um, beyond just enhancing this facility, uh, the main purpose of this grant and the Blue Tech Ocean is really around connecting everyone across this ecosystem. We have phenomenal partners and we could not do it without all of you from Woods Hole Oceanographic, UMass Boston, UMass Dartmouth, Tufts University, Northeastern, Mass Challenge, Mass Maritime, and our regional partners, University of Rhode Island and the Naval Undersea Warfare Center in Newport, and many other partners across the country were building out this collaborative network that is going to allow us all to work together in real time, solving really difficult problems in this ocean space. The last thing I want to talk about is around how we're going to enable growing this blue tech workforce. If we are as successful as we all think we're going to be in building all of these offshore industries, we're going to need a lot more people to help us get there. And so this grant is really helping us provide underwater robot kits that, that uh, Carolyn mentioned earlier from both Mate ROV and Sea Perch, which is going to allow us to uh, expand our reach across multiple Massachusetts schools, enabling new blue tech uh, experts and excitement across the region. The other thing that we're really excited about is that we are launching a summer Blue Tech Academy with Mass Robotics. That's going to allow us to spend two weeks in the city getting kids very excited about how these vehicles work, how this technology can change their, their world, and hopefully build that whole new base of children who are excited about potential jobs in the blue economy. Um, all I want to say in closing is that we are very, very excited to get started with this. Uh, we are thankful to all our partners and everyone who has helped us along the way. And as we leave here, um, we are going to have uh, snacks and drinks out in the tent behind uh, the facility. We'll follow uh, the folks over there. And we hope you will all join us in celebrating this awesome achievement and this awesome capability that we are uh, embarking on. So thank you all very much.